This is an interval that I saw on the struggling grad student uh, YouTube page today. And so I thought maybe I would take a look at it and try to do it myself. Uh, so we see that we could split this up as two functions. And I think that's the way to go. Even though we have e to the negative x and I see I have a negative x here. I think just u substitution won't be strong enough. So I'm going to try a by parts. Uh, method here. Um, so then you have lots of different choices of what you're going to choose uh, for your u and for your dv. <clears throat> I think I'm going to try um, this as my u because if I do that du will just become negative 1 and that would be negative dx and that seems like that would be simpler to work with than x minus one half x squared so i think that, i think so far so good uh let's see about dv so dv i think i'm going to choose e to the negative x dx so if i integrate both sides then v well i need this to come back to what it is so i think i'm gonna have to go negative yeah, so if I take derivative of this function, it'll become this function. So that looks good, I think, as long as I didn't make any silly mistakes. So the formula, uv minus v du. Okay, I have all my pieces now, so I'm going to try to put it together. Let's see. So u, I have as 1 minus x, v I have is negative, so I'll put a negative here. Uh, e to the negative x minus the integral of v. And so we have a minus sign here, so I'll just put a plus sign there. E to the negative x uh, du negative sign. So that's going to become, oh, I'm getting mixed up. So I think that was negative, negative from the formula positive, so actually it's negative again, and then dx, yeah, that should do it, okay, now, I have to do this, well, that's fine, because I already knew how to do that before, so I need to create something that's going to make uh, this to be the derivative, so what's going to happen is when you take the derivative, the negative one comes down, and that becomes positive, so I think that'll be positive, one minus x, e to the negative x. So like I say, if we brought a negative one down here and you took the derivative, it would become positive. So I just think it would be positive e to the negative x. And we need to evaluate this from 1 to infinity. So I guess you would call this an improper integral because we have to go to all the way to infinity. And the only way I know how to do that is to take the limit. So that's what I'm going to do. The other way is really easy. We just plug in 1. So maybe I'll just plug in 1 now so I kind of know what it is and what I'm dealing with. And then I'll take the limit over here. So if I plug in 1 into this, I got 1 minus, um, one, minus 1 is 0. So that just goes to 0. And then I would just have um, e to the negative first. So that would just be one, uh, 1 over e there. Okay. So I just need to remember that that's 1 over e. That's not too bad. Taking the limit, uh, approach infinity. Well, is this going to be hard or not? I guess we'll see. So as the limit, as x approaches infinity of negative 1 minus x, e to the negative x plus e to the negative x. So this part here, I believe it's going to go to zero. This is one over e to the x, and as x grows bigger and bigger and bigger and just keeps going bigger, that's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So I think that's going to go to zero. Uh, here is the only discrepancy that I see. We would have an x over e to the x, but I think that's going to go to zero too. So I think that goes to zero. So that means it's just going to be minus one over e. So we just have e. So I think this must be the solution to that problem.